So if I can challenge you to do anything in particular, it's take a longer term view and it's a challenge. Prioritize long term over short term. Prioritize depth over shallow, pithy sort of individual facts. Prioritize knowledge over common sense. Given the current climate uh, on social media, the internet, the news in general, this might seem like a controversial thing to talk about, but the truth is that uncommon knowledge is more important than common sense. This isn't to say that common sense isn't important at all, or that it doesn't matter ever, but a lot of the things that we're talking about now really need the benefit of uncommon knowledge and depth of knowledge over and above common sense. So what is knowledge really? Well, it's acquaintance with or understanding of sort of science, technique, art. It's an understanding. It's, uh, you can have a depth of knowledge. Common sense is sound and prudent judgment coming from a simple interpretation of facts or events. It's a simple interpretation. It's a simple thing. It's kind of easy to grasp. It's a, it's a sense. It's a common sense. It's not something that you can develop deeply. You can't have a deep common sense. It doesn't really work like that. Facts are kind of different. Again, facts are just like individual data points. So things can be true, they can be uh, accurate, but they can also be taken out of context and they can be used uh, for misinformation. They can be used without uh, the proper understanding around how they were generated in the first place. And I'm sure we're all kind of familiar with, with some version of facts being manipulated to make a point which really runs contrary to the point of the fact in the first place. Knowledge helps us to get that context around facts. It's really important. And common sense works really well for simple problems or simple things or simply kind of intuitive uh, single input kind of challenges. But when we're faced with sophisticated problems or challenges or in-depth questions, then knowledge becomes increasingly important. Things like the handling of a pandemic, uh, medical things, uh, engineering, things that require a lot of context and multiple inputs and multiple levels of understanding and, and pre-existing knowledge to go into working out the hows and whys of something. And I see a lot of people posting things and going, oh, it's common sense, X, Y, Z, or this is common sense. And it's frustrating because if you believe yourself to have any kind of expertise in any area at all, ever, then you should probably respect expertise in other spaces too. And, and that's something that I'm seeing increasingly rejected in online conversations where it's like, okay, someone knows something deeply and is an expert in a space, or there is a consensus amongst experts, but so-and-so has inferred something from a couple of random facts or has strung a few random uh, facts together and now run that through the filter of common sense, a simple interpretation of those facts, and something seems counterintuitive. There are a lot of challenges to that. One is that our intuitions can often be wrong, and that's something that I'll talk about in a sec. But also, it's a challenge to the conversation of understanding that someone can say a correct fact and still not be the person that you should listen to about maybe how to deal with that or, or, or how to gain a greater understanding of the circumstances around the fact. So for instance, Harvey Weinstein could say it is not okay and it is inappropriate to sexually assault people. And you would say, yes, that's a true fact. He's 100% correct. But Harvey Weinstein is not the person you would listen to to gain a deeper understanding about that issue or to learn how to deal with those kinds of problems or to address the systemic issues that lead to those kinds of problems in the environment he was in. He's capable of saying something that's true and correct but he's not the person to listen to about how to deal with those things. And a lot of the time on the, on the internet, it seems like we mix those kinds of things up. Someone says something a little bit true, or there's one piece of information in a stream of, of information or inferences that is true. And people go, yeah, cool. And that makes heaps of sense. We should listen to this person about what to do about these problems. But there's a big difference between, for instance, a chef saying one piece of data that's true without context and then listening to them infer a bunch of things about that single data point or about how to handle that single thing or whatever. That's a problem. That's not something that we should be leaning into. Knowledge is accountable. Knowledge takes time. Knowledge does evolve and it does change, but because it's on the hook, you can't just say something and then disappear and be like, cool, no big deal, whatever. Whereas 
there's a lot of people out there that are saying individual bits and pieces out of out of their knowledge or out of their experience and they're not ever going to be held accountable to that because it's got nothing to do with their day-to-day work understanding life whatever but they can say things that play on people's emotions and existing biases to get attention so we go through this kind of dance constantly with information and with expertise and with knowledge and with common sense and and, and our biases. And I just wanted to bring up on top of the difference between someone who says something correct and someone being the person you should listen to about how to deal with this problem. Another example might be I might say that my leg is broken and that might be correct, but I'm not the person to talk to about how to fix my broken leg. That's why we have doctors and that's they go through a process of learning and knowledge to understand a whole range of things to fix the leg, okay? So, <clears throat> the other thing that affects people's interpretation of, of facts in particular or data or circumstances that are in front of them are this wide range of biases. And I, I'm not going to go through every possible kind of bias that there is, that there is in the world because, it, you know, it would take quite a while. But there are a handful of very, very important ones that are worth touching on. So you can kind of try and see how many kind of headlines or memes or groups or or inflammatory kind of people on the internet are, are pointing their arguments at these kinds of biases or they're exhibiting these biases themselves or they're using them to get attention because we are such emotional, emotive kind of animals and it's kind of easy to give get people to rise and then get attention and then use that tension for either just to get more attention to, for political gain or for commercial gain. We want to try and counteract that with, with knowledge, with understanding. So some of the biases, let's go through them. First up is negativity bias, which is our, our bias towards remembering and overemphasizing negative experiences or information in the day. Headlines of like today, 16 million people did the right thing, don't get that much attention, but one person, some heinous crime would get a lot of attention. You would remember it. You have this negativity bias towards that kind of information, towards the bad moments in your day as opposed to the myriad good or or average moments. We are primed already to pay more attention to that, pay more attention to, say, risk or or danger or challenge or negativity because uh, in the in the wild, I believe, that would have kept us a little bit more safe. There's all these things that aren't going to negatively affect you, just walk past them. But if there's something that's negatively going to affect you, you need to be paying attention to it. You need to remember that. You need to, you need to store that away and pay attention for the next time you might come across it. So we have this negativity bias. We have an expedience bias, which is we have a, a bias towards acting quickly. It's kind of like an anti-patience bias. We're not great at long-term projection of things and, and thinking deep into the future. We want to do things quickly. We want to do them now. We want to sort of get them uh, off, the, off the slate of your brain quickly. So we have this bias towards things that are happening quickly or towards wanting things to happen quickly rather than wait and see or do things later or let things play out. So... There's an impatience built into us that that definitely people play on, that definitely the media plays on, and it, and it runs counter to the kinds of policy and procedures that really benefit us in the long term because we don't often value things in the, in the future the same way that we value them uh, in the very, very short term. And in fact, we have a distance bias which sort of points in the same direction. We want th- we, we, we pay more attention to things that are close to us in time, in proximity, in relationship, in community. We pay more attention to those things as opposed to things that are far away. You think for many hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, we really had no concept of what was happening on the other side of the globe, for instance. We, we were wired to pay attention to our direct environment. So we over-index the importance of those things that are near us as opposed to being able to have a broader understanding or remove that that distance bias to understand things that are happening further away from us in time or space or relationships. And so that also feeds into this kind of impatience. As we're paying attention to the things that are close to us, we also have this experience bias, which is a bias towards believing that our individual experiences are an objective truth, that the things that happen to us or that we perceive must be objectively true, which is obviously not always the case. And I suppose... Um, magic is probably a great example of that. You see a thing and you're like, wow, that's 
obviously that happened. Like if you didn't know a magic was happening to you, like someone's like, whoosh, you might be like, oh, wow, that's, that's crazy. That, that This is what I saw. It really definitely happened. But actually it was a trick. And if you had a little bit more context knowledge, whatever, you would know that. But we have this bias towards our own experience where we we prioritize that as being a a source of, of unalienable truth. Uh, and, and it's just not all the time. That's the thing. And sometimes our experience can be an absolute outlier uh, compared to the experiences of the many or, or most people. So uh, that experience bias is something that we see a lot when people are sort of saying, well, this happened to me, so therefore X, Y, Z. And they sort of drag their own experience out as being true for everybody, which is obviously not the best way to go about learning, knowing, or, or encouraging action about certain certain kinds of things that affect a lot of people. When we're making that kind of effort to promote something, we have a we have a safety bias. We're inclined to protect against loss more than make gain. So we want to we want to not lose what we have, rather than sort of, I suppose, gamble or risk or invest in future gain. Protecting what we have right now is more important. We we value it more than future gain and, and that can affect people's decision making as they make short term hold on to what you've got kinds of decisions rather than long term increase the net amount for myself and everyone else kinds of decisions when you do anything over and over again you're, you're feeding into your attention bias which is a tendency towards things that you think about a lot or are in your peripheral and in your vision straight away, you tend to prioritize things you can see and that are in your attention regularly. So re- repetition in the news, repetition in the kinds of material and media that you consume, in the books that you consume, in the conversations that you have, tend to give you a bias to towards believing that those things are more true. And that can also be impacted by a confirmation bias, which is the tendency to seek out information that you already agree with, things you understand already, things that are easy to understand, things that validate what you already think. So we've got these kinds of these kinds of uh, information biases that are coming in. We have an anchoring bias, which is a tendency to to prioritize the first kinds of information you come across rather than the best. So the first thing that you hear in space tends to tends to take pr- priority and precedent in your brain and it's hard to undo that first bit of information which is really important when we're when we're dealing with things that are new or you're dealing with new pieces of information the first place that you get it from can have a profound impact on what you believe to be true later on regardless of the whether it was true or whether it was worth listening to in the first place so a mistruth at the very beginning of your engagement with a topic can really color your engagement with that topic if you only hang around or pay attention for a short period of time. That anchoring bias, that bias towards that first kind of information feeds into our conservatism bias, which is a reluctance to change our beliefs when presented with new information. It, we, we, we tend to hang on to existing beliefs longer than we should, even in the face of new information. So we kind of insufficiently revise our beliefs when we're presented with new information or new ideas. And our selection bias leads us towards picking information that we understand, that's simple, that we can engage with. And then we have this kind of illusory truth bias, which is like this kind of truthiness detector that's deficient because we tend to believe things that sound like they might be true, that sound commonsensical, that sound kind of true, that feed into our confirmation bias, that feed into all of these other things. If it, if it kind of feels true, we tend to hang on to those beliefs. If it's easy to understand, we, we, we hang on to those beliefs. When the truth is there's so many things that are not easy to understand, um, but are still obviously true. Uh, the illusory truth effect can be really sort of damaging. Feed that into the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is that basically when you don't know enough, you don't know that you don't know enough. It's like you don't know enough about a subject to realize you don't know about that subject. And you have this incredible amount of confidence in your knowledge just because you actually don't know enough about it to realize you shouldn't have that level of confidence. And the Dunning-Kruger effect is also amplified by the curse of knowledge bias that people have. And this is kind of a problem on the on the side of the expertise and of, of, of people with knowledge because it's a it's an incapacity at that end to understand when you're presenting an idea that the people you're presenting to don't have the knowledge that you have already. So a challenge to 
actually explaining things to people, starting where they are. You sort of say all this stuff and you expect that people know what you're talking about from the beginning. And that is a real challenge because that also creates tension in communication, whether it's online, offline, in a, in a classroom, uh, in a doctor's surgery, for instance, you might get told a bunch of things and they say something like, oh, your hemoglobin's low and you know, blah, 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 blah. And they carry on with this assumption, you understand what hemoglobin is and, and what it does, and you don't know. So you have this tension there as well, which is coming from uh, an, uh, the expert side of bias, which is to not understand where people are coming from themselves or the sort of the lack of knowledge or, or that, that they might have uh, when, you're, when they're engaging with the topic that you're an expert in. So we have all of these kinds of biases and many more. There are, there are a whole bunch of them. You know, there's, there's lots of these things that run counter to our gut feeling. So many of these biases are showing us that our guts can be manipulated quite easily, that, the, that for the current information age that we have these biases that maybe were really beneficial when we were running around in, in small groups of 150 people or whatever, these little tribal groups and we were outside and we we're hunter gathering and we we're doing these sorts of things and they were all potentially quite useful or large chunks of them were useful for that kind of uh, environment. But in this environment, they're so damaging. And so you go, how do, how do we really undo all that? Like, what's, what do you believe? How do you work out what to believe? How do you understand these things? Well, Knowledge itself and knowing about knowledge is a, is a series of kinds of, of uh, study in itself. We have uh, epistemology, which is kind of the study of knowing things. We have philosophy, which is kind of picking apart ideas and understanding how they come to be and, and putting them through some rigor, which is really important. We have psychology and behavioral economics, which are really important uh, when it comes to understanding how and why people interact with ideas and knowledge, and that's really important. And then we have individual areas of expertise, which are incredibly, incredibly important. The greater the number of experts with the greatest amount of depth are gonna have the best information on hand. Now that information will change over time. Often it does, we've, we've had many scientific revolutions that we understand have have shifted the way we know we we know about things or see things but still it is the best system for really understanding things particularly in in sort of silos it really is the best linear way to understand expertise now i think we can improve our capacity to understand the way different knowledge groups and and things interact with one another absolutely but to do away with expertise and focus only on individual facts and ignore the, all of our biases and do all these sorts of things is quite challenging. So the simple way to engage with ideas that makes a massive, massive difference and would probably undo and, and undo the influence of these biases and people that are trying to manipulate what's going on is to pay attention for the long term. Long term versus short term. If we even step away from all the kinds of knowledge and move towards an environment where we ask the question, are you only paying attention in the long term or are you paying attention in the short term? Then we will see the benefit of long term paying attention because you would see when charlatans kind of change their tune all the time. You would see inconsistencies and hypocrisies and contradictions. You would see when people are just moving with what's popular, trying to keep their fingers on the zeitgeist and, and deliver information that people want to hear rather than things that are true. You would see that some people have been invested in learning, invested in developing knowledge for a really long time, and so therefore we should probably listen to them. So if I can challenge you to do anything in particular, it's take a longer term view, and it's a challenge. Prioritize long term over short term. Prioritize depth over shallow, pithy sort of individual facts, prioritize knowledge over common sense, and we will move together in a way that improves the environment for everybody, socially, economically, and hopefully then, you know, it makes my job easier of ensuring that everyone ends up housed, employed, and has good mental health, and that we end up in a place where we have an ecosystem like the Just Be Nice project that is working at full capacity to ensure everyone gets the help that they need when they need it for as long as they need it regardless of how they need help so hopefully we can engage with information in this kind of fashion and improve our cultural discourse and 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 come together and do a great job and look after each other and as always just be nice